This is how I took one effect and made multiple animations super easily. The interesting thing about this now is that we have multiple animations to post to social media. We're in here in Blender, we're deleting the default cube as always, uh, and then we're going to import our statue model. Uh, you can use any model, it doesn't really matter, as long as you kind of make it optimized for uh, cloth animation. So the way that we're going to do that is first we're going to decimate it with the decimate modifier. Uh, point 0.1 normally works, you just want it probably between 100,000 and 200,000, um, but if you can get less than that and still maintain the quality, then you're good. Uh, you want to apply the decimate modifier, and then you want to go uh, tries to quads if you actually have triangles, because the cloth modifier works really well with quads, not tries. Once you've done that, take a look around your model, make sure the uh, focus areas have the, the, the quads that's basically going to ensure that they have the best uh, time with your cloth simulation. Once you do that, um, you can continue along and you can actually create the cloth modifier that we're going to use. Uh, when I start out, I basically use a rubber preset and that's that's pretty good for what we're going to be doing. Um, this scale of this model is pretty large, so um, it's going to behave like rubber, but it's actually going to probably look uh, more like silk at this scale. Um, the higher you, the larger you scale something, the um, there's a big change. Basically, uh, Blender's trying to make it seem like this massive, massive object in real world scale has like this actual cloth sim. Um, here I use cube to actually check that it's the size that I want it to be. And then I apply the scale. Because again, when you import the model, it's way too large for what you're doing. Uh, I use pressure and um, negative shrinking factor to kind of make it morph and expand as the cloth sim is like riding over it and then I reverse or not reverse but dial down gravity as well because gravity for cloth sim is really kind of crazy um, especially at this scale because again it thinks everything's super heavy so likewise when you're turning on the turbulence you want to upscale it to like 30,000 and that's going to um, actually let allow it to have an effect on the large scale model. And then obviously turn on self collisions because that's going to give us the best quality. Now for this next bit, this is really powerful. Um, and I think that this has a lot more applications for um, what it's worth, but it still has pretty, pretty cool quality here as well. This is a what's called a vertex weight proximity modifier. And Basically what we're going to be doing is masking the cloth sim. So um, we'll cover the entire model with a cube and then tell Blender um, to turn off the cloth sim as the cube basically goes over the model. And that'll give us our sort of like forming effect that we saw in the animation. The other thing I'm doing here is I'm putting an empty on the inside of the cube, trying to make sure that it's the same scale and the same location. And I do that by uh, parenting it eventually. <laughs> um, but by using this empty, I can then array the cube um, along the center axis, axis which allows us to have a basically like a volumized cube which basically um, will help us in our later in our vertex weight proximity node or modifier because it operates on faces and vertices and um, the cube doesn't have a volume so we have to basically fix that um, and we do so by upping the amount as you can see here, basically what we're doing is um, 
we're shifting the cube, or we will be shifting the cube up. And then as we shift the cube up, we can basically like art direct the entire shot and animation. Um, and then from here, I'm uh, shifting the vertex weight proximity. Um, I'm using a vertex group like you just saw me do uh, with the from the from the edit mode and um, you'll see me shift it here in a second um, where I'm animating just the cube moving up and so basically it goes from covering the full model to um, not covering the full model and so I think what you want to do is have it be blue to red um, with blue being go and red being stop. I think I might, <laughs> I might have to check that in a second here. Um, but so the other interesting thing about this is, or what I, what I do here is I apply the same effect to two other statues and then put all the statues into a gallery that I got from Sketchfab and <clears throat> Basically from there, I allow the effects to kind of roll out and um, art direct it from there. The interesting thing and the really um, powerful thing about this whole effect is that it is, um, you can export it as an ABC file and then re-import it into Blender. And by doing that, you have a lot of versatility in reversing or fast forwarding or even slowing down your animation. And I'll kind of point out the pros and cons in a minute, but that's one really great option. Now the file sizes of the ABC exports do get really large. I think for these ones, they're about five gigabytes, but um, they're not slow in Blender at all. Um, at least I didn't notice any sort of performance issues. And that's really, really nice, especially when you're talking about how heavy some of these uh, claw simulations can really be. So here we are again. I'm basically taking um, the cube and trying to animate it from uh, top to bottom. And as the blue slowly shifts from blue to red, um, it's going to be turning off the cloth simulation. And so it looks like it's slowly forming and coming back together. And because it's a model of a statue, it kind of looks like the statue is coming back together, which is really interesting. And then the other things that I suggest you do with this is kind of play around with it in multiple different scenarios. I'll show you how I took it into geometry nodes and applied different geometry nodes effects to it, which I think is probably the more powerful way to uh, play with the ABC files, especially when we can add more resolution and add um, interesting effects. Even though this cloth sim will be low resolution, thankfully, um, it'll help us performance wise, but still be really cool because you can do all of your basic geometry nodes magic to it. Okay, so basically after this, I go ahead and bake it. And after it's baked, I export it, like I said, as an ABC file, and then do it two more times to two different sculptures that I like. And then from there, I re-import it into a new Blender file. And the new Blender file is like a uh, gallery that I got from Sketchfab. The interesting thing here is um, there's a uh, a section called time when you import an ABC file where you can totally um, edit and do and change the frame rate for the entire ABC file. So it looks really, really nice. And ultimately, um, you can slow it down. You can do all sorts of things with it on top of the geometry node effects that we'll be adding to it. And all these statues had all the same settings for the most part. Um, there might've been some tweaking because of the sizing, but 
they all had that same rubber cloth sim on them as well. And here we're back to the skeleton that we were working with. This is the geometry node setup that I used. Super simple, very, very low key. Um, I did not do much as far as geometry nodes. I used a subdivision surface, a mesh to curves, and then curves to points, which is something new that I was playing with, and then set point radius, of course, and then set material, of course. The interesting thing that will happen as I turn these uh, nodes back on is subdivision sub surface actually works pretty well. Uh, I didn't think it would. Um, mesh to curve is normally pretty nice, especially when you're working with high density meshes like this. And then curves to points actually helped improve render time because the curves were not uh, rendering out as curves, they were points. And whenever your curves are this tiny, it really doesn't matter all that much um, as far as like look, the you know, the amount of points versus the amount of curves, uh, points are always gonna win because it's easier to render points ultimately for Blender. And then here I'm showing you that I basically keyframed the time function that I was talking about just a minute ago. And um, I correlated that with the, the actual timeline. And some of them are slower, some of them are faster, which just is great because it gives us a lot of versatility when we're in Blender. And um, so ultimately you can create um, these really great effects uh, with using ABC files. Um, ABC files, so the important piece to note here is that you can use outside files. You don't even have to get these ABCs from Blender. You can technically get them from Houdini or, or C4D or whatever it is that you're using and then bring them into Blender and then change it with geometry nodes. On top of that, if you already have all of these ABCs, there's no reason why you can't try out different scenes that you want to try. Um, you know, I had a gallery here, but in the uh, opening scene, I had a ton of different things that I was trying out with like the mirror modifier. There's a lot of versatility in just doing different things and like having a lot of fun with it. And I totally encourage you to uh, try that out. And when you have a really cool effect on top of a really cool model sort of forming, um, it's easier to play with the background and kind of try new things and, and do things that you might not normally do. So I highly encourage that. And worst case scenario is you just have a ton of animations that you can post online and do different things with, like I did here. Uh, ultimately, I was able to make a huge collective animation that was almost a minute long by just having um, all of these guys put together. Obviously, I don't use them all, but it's really great to have them all. So um, if you're interested, I'll have some of these up on my Patreon or uh, Gumroad check them out. I have a ton of other effects on there too. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thank you.